Hello everyone, my name is Sergey Yastrebov. I'm a community lead from Facebook Developer Circle Moscow. And today I welcome you at the third day of Deep Learning Online Meetup. If you didn't see previous presentation where Shrey Sharma talked about self-driving cars or Sergio Garrido talked about deep generative models for tabular data, check out our YouTube channel. If during our session you have some question related to today's topics, use live chat or comments. If you would have some comments or question when you will watch this presentation in record, use comments because live chat will not be available after live session is over. And now let me introduce our today's speaker, Ruslan Martinov, who will talk about his experience of creating content recognition system for audio content. Welcome, Ruslan. You can start sharing your screen and start your presentation. Hello. Thank you, Sergey. I will. Uh, can you see my screen? Yep. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ruslan. Thank you for coming. I'm here today to share experimental framework for automatic audio content recognition, which is based on deep learning and INN search with Reafali Faiz library. Actually, this uh, solution uh, opposite to traditional automatic audio content recognition based on handcrafting features. And for this solution, uh, I will try to answer the question. Do sounds matter or do different audio contents type matter or we can use some unified process for all and what we should pay attention to. So if it means if we build pipeline like this on some deep, deep learning uh, approach, for example. So let's get started. Uh, just a sec. And uh, what I will talk. First, I'm going to describe the considering topic at my current company, it is vk.com. Then I will tell you overall framework and, and components such as feature structuring and building our audio fingerprints and billion scale audio search. And finally, I will share results for podcast processing and give some conclusion and lesson learned. A few words about me. I'm senior machine learning engineer, engineer at uh, VK, COM, music team. My PhD thesis was about protecting video streams against content modification and copyright infringement. Uh, VK actually it is the largest social network in Russia. You can see some metric of these uh, social networks such as monthly activity users, message delay, and so on. And um, one of the features of this uh, social network is that uh, our users can upload, share, and retrieve their MP3 files and do it legal. And I will show how it works. Actually, audio from comes to VKCom from two different sources. First one, it is usual for audio uh, streaming services such as Spotify, Deezer, and so on. It is legal audio distributors and we're storing this data into legal audio storage. And the second one, it is audio from our users. It is UGC, user generated content. It is some unknown MP3 files. Our users uploading these MP3 files and then we apply audio content recognition and time localization system in order to recognize this mp file. And we need to know exact song or maybe part of song. Or for example, this is one of mp files, might be some combination of a song or part of song, for example, like this. And we need it in, to efficiently manage uh, this, uh, uh, user sympathy files and also improve our recommendation, uh, do efficiently retrieval of these files. So, and uh, this system very important for us, for example. And uh, next, I will go over the framework, some uh, the main components, and a little bit late, we'll give some details for each of parts. And uh, we start from audio. Uh, audio, as you know, it's uh, ND array. For example, for this mono, it is 1D array. And then we apply some pre-processing. Actually, it is converting 
our audio into logmail spectrogram and then we path uh, this uh, sort of image into feature extracting pipeline and got three outputs. First of all, it is, uh, let it be A features, then it is audio tags. Uh, audio tags, it's classes of audio. And uh, for example, maybe gender, mood, and so on. And the final, it is this uh, rough embeddings. It is some prepare, uh, some uh, rough vectors uh, for audio fingerprints. Uh, and we apply post-processing on rough embeddings and get th to output. First of all, uh, it is after post-processing, it is uh, our audio fingerprints may uh, compress and add, add into our search indexes. It is actually FIES library. And the second one, it is search. And uh, uh, yes. And after FIES, we have pairs of candidates. Pairs of candidates, uh, uh, it means some sub subsequence from query and from our storage, for, for example and uh, some and reference our audio and uh, but after this step we have actually uh, we have good recall but low precision and in order to solve this issue uh, uh, one of the approaches apply it is using some filtering uh, additional neural network in my context it's our non basal fil filter and then our final matching results it is subsequence with time, for example, from 10 seconds up to, I don't know, 30 seconds, this song of all this is also and so on. And uh, then after that, we are using this information for managing uh, items. Let's uh, look deeper inside features extraction, post-processing and so on. And as I mentioned, audio, it is one DRA. And uh, uh, then we apply CNN preprocessing. It is short-term uh, Fourier transform and get log mail of CNN. As you know, it is image which combine uh, time or fr frequency of song, it, y, it's, uh, y, x, it is uh, frequency, x, it's time and some, um, uh, some amplitude at, at, at some point. And then we apply CNN, means convolution neural network, uh, in order to get our rough embeddings. Then we do, for example, PCA with whitening post-processing in order to reduce the emissions of it. And then uh, final state, we do some sliding window aggregation for, for example, four uh, second or about four second and apply some pooling and final audio level PCA with whitening in order to get our final, uh, uh, final audio fingerprints. Yes. And uh, for example, with uh, step one item, it might be uh, target for each query and two second and two items and about two second. Uh, it is for indexes. And uh, as for uh, CNN and uh, which CNN I have used in my uh, approach in this pipeline, uh, actually it is CNN pertained on uh, audio set from Google. As you know, this audio set uh, has about five, uh, 527 uh, different labels, different classes. And my current uh, uh, baseline, it is VDGH neural network. But however, of course, right now we have uh, a neural network better than uh, then this, for example, as you know, Viagram log mail CNN, the current state of the art for, for this uh, data set. And as for features extracting, again, uh, uh, after this uh, neural network, we have tags, it is our classes. And I will uh, show how we can use it, for example. And a features, it is high level uh, embeddings, uh, and it might be uh, for in some cases global uh, global descriptor, 
and uh, rough embeddings at this uh, vector from some intermediate levels. So, and of course, better very often from my experience, if we have a higher score on classification, very often and for features extracting, for retrieving problem, it allow us to increase the score as well, but not always, to be honest. And uh, as, as you can see, it is a straightforward, simple uh, approach, how we can use it and um, but uh, it is it, but it is enough to explain this framework. And uh, but if we would like to do some more sophisticated with the better score, for example, I think we can take a look at uh, some state of the art from image retrieving and adapt this approach to our goal, audio matching. And one of the example of which it might be deep local and global features for it and with training some attention of the encoders and so on. And uh, probably we'll have better you know, score, better results and global uh, descriptor, it uh, will replace, for example, a features in this context. Uh, as for a features, uh, as I mentioned, it is high level descriptor and uh, how we can use it uh, first go first purpose of using this, I think it is uh, we can use for acoustic uh, similar search. What it mean? Uh, we can take one song, for example, in simplest way, apply some pooling and uh, at or the set of songs, for example, at sub, sub, uh, uh, some pooling and add to our index sum of, and then try to find song which uh, uh, sounds similar to current. And it might be useful, for example, for audio recommendation systems for. The second uh, purpose of using a feature it is additional features for video classification. Uh, for, from my experience, uh, these features allow significant improved quality of video classification, for example. And the last one, it is baseline features for, uh, for quickly building new audio models, new audio processing models. Uh, and because yes, however, the score of them will fall about from 10 to 30 per cent. If we compare from with some neural network which has been trained from scratch or for some fine tune it and so on. But I suppose it might be good, start good baseline for checking you uh, in a new idea, for example. And uh, as you know, for building efficient pipeline, we have to understand the data and the one of approach for this, it is, uh, classify them. On the left part of the slide, you can see uh, Google audio set ontology. Uh, we can see some group of them, uh, such as, for example, animal, music, and so on. And we divide our five, uh, 527 uh, classes into these groups, subgroups, and so on. And uh, my question was, okay, our users uploading some MP3 files, but what is it if uh, we consider this data in this uh, ontology? And I have two random set of audio from, it was, it, it was about 20, uh, 27,000 hours of audio from users. And uh, what I have got. First of all, as expected, we have a lot of music, uh, but not only. Uh, also, it is speech, and as for music, it is some dance music, house music, and so on. And what uh, it means for us, for this pipeline, it means we can't uh, work with only music uh, audio types, for example. And it is uh, very important. And uh, uh, because I'm working for music team, for us important to understand not just music, but some gender instruments and so on. And uh, I uh, look and deeper inside 
this music uh, gender, so music uh, subgroup such as instruments, moods, role, and gender. And my main conclusion after analyzing this result was, first of all, angry music, uh, if we take a look at mood, mood for example, is very expressive and uh, simple to recognize. And for, if we take a look at mood, we have a lot of angry music. And uh, they are, the reason for it is not uh, our users love for angry music, but uh, it is music uh, easier to recognize. It has high energy and so on. And uh, the second, my conclusion after this analyzing what was that the most popular gender at hip hop and revs, and to be honest, in, as expected in general. However, we can see also heavy metal, punk rock a lot as well. And uh, but the reason for it, it is this gender actually very related to angry mood, and uh, by uh, this reason again, it's simple to uh, recognize because at this uh, experiment, I have got. Uh, audios with uh, the most expressive uh, labels. So, and the last one, uh, uh, last one conclusion from this experiment was that users primary uploading dance music and for role, for example, we have a lot, yeah, a lot dance music, but not always. Uh, yes. And right now we have some, um, uh, we have our audio fingerprints. And uh, next we have to figure out how to uh, search them in, uh, because in context of my problem, we have support uh, search for tens of millions of trees and billions items in the index. About this next part of my talk. And uh, for search, we are using a primary FIES library. It is actually, from my opinion, a great library which will support a lot indexes, a lot of compression of the offer vectors, and also support GPU and storing data on the disk and so on. It's very, very powerful library for search, uh, from my opinion. And I have tried to for this goal different indexes, but the best result have been achieved for inverted multi indexes, which is based on product quantization. And, and as for search, uh, if, uh, before starting the search, we have to do some preparation and we backing our data into some clusters. And uh, yes, and for each clusters, for example, you can see some clusters, 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 and for each cluster, each cluster related to some centroid. So, and, and at the search, are we, uh, our search uh, with these indexes can be divided into two phases. And first phase, we have to find the nearest uh, centroid and the second phase, it's, it is exhausted search where we are ranking items from these buckets. And then we select nearest to the, our query and, uh, and how many, uh, how many uh, centroids and buckets we're going to consider. It is an parameter from phase, for example. And uh, second one, top case, yeah, how many uh, nearest items we we're going to select. And, uh, in, and uh, as for storing it, and this again, we have query, then we select, uh, we try to find nearest uh, centroid and, uh, and each centroid uh, related to some inverted list. Um, because our items stored in inverted list, uh, an inverted list, it's actually, it looks like some, I don't know, hash table, for example. Yes, and next I would like to look deeper inside inverted multix indexes and, and give some intuition how it works because my next experiment will be about it, about evaluating performance of these indexes for my goal and uh, how it works. Uh, first, we're subdividing the original vector into subcomponents. For example, for two subcomponents, 
component then uh, clustering h subcomponent separately with k means and you can see some clusters for example for h subcomponents and then uh, our uh, we got some uh, virtual clusters and h virtual clusters uh, related to some inverted list and uh, the number is an ID of virtual clusters, just Cartesian product uh, of these parts, uh, uh, these parts with these real clusters. I think it's very, um, it's a great idea for selecting because uh, it allow us, for example, significant uh, reduce uh, number of data for on the training step. However, this approach has uh, in some drawback as well, draw, drawbacks as well. And my, next, my question was, okay, we have some uh, audio, for example, it is uh, uh, UGC audio, music and uh, run podcast. If we will increase the number of virtual clusters and evaluate the performance of this system on uh, our uh, training set what will have uh, what, what will have got and here my uh, conclusion was as expected the more virtual cluster there the smaller the marks and median size of clusters and uh, uh, why for us important max size and median because it allow us uh, increase the perform uh, improve performance our system will work faster and it is important and my problem because users uploading a lot different uh, audios and we have to uh, perform them fast. And uh, I evaluated for uh, this uh, index for 4 millions, 18 millions and 84 millions of, uh, of virtual clusters that was for fullnesses, how many uh, we have some max size of uh, virtual max number of filter clusters, but how many, how, which percent of them really fill uh, uh, fill at uh, the training sink, for example, and max size of virtual clusters and median. It is clear and maybe not so interesting, but a more interesting question: What will happen on a test set? And my test set consisted of uh, different audio content types. And uh, one of them was on the training set, for example, it's podcast in Russian, and, but some new ones such as audio from sport videos, audio, uh, audio books, podcasts, and audio books and podcasts in four regional languages. And also it is audio from UGC video and so on. And my favorite, uh, to Sounds of Nature. And I uh, hear my main conclusion was unseen audio content types might significantly degradate system performance. And uh, because, it, uh, uh, we, uh, because we might have very, uh, very long uh, inverted lists, for example, and, uh, it, and, and exhaustive, so exhausted phase, uh, we will have to perform a lot of data. And the second conclusion, with uh, speech in the new languages might be considered as new audio content types. And uh, take for these experiments, uh, take a look at the first picture. Uh, it is purchase uh, percentage of new virtual clusters for different numbers of virtual clusters for and so on. And we can see some increasing new virtual clusters uh, uh, with clusters with new IDs uh, with increasing number of virtual clusters. That means percent of size, of course. And the most interesting result I have got for a relative max size of new virtual clusters. And we, as we can see, see here, for example, for audio from movies, we have large, very, very large clusters uh, with a lot of all uh, new data. And uh, as I mentioned, performance might significantly degradate on, on them. And uh, also we have got uh, this result for Sounds of Nature as well. And uh, about the next part, uh, about fingerprint compression, uh, because we have to keep in memory a lot items in order to do search very fast. 
and it might be reasonable to compress items uh, to compress uh, uh, yeah to com uh, to compress items and to compress our vectors in order to reduce memory and also if uh, if we're considering one of the approaches quantization it might improve uh, uh, performance as well so i consider two baseline types uh, it first for scalar quantization and uh, we how it works uh, we uh, take age dimension of original vector apply quant uh, our quantizer and quantize this uh, dimension into power of and lower uh, levels and then storing each part into our inverted list and for example if we consider n equal to one we will get uh, some binarization of it and for example we have some threshold uh, equal to zero for example and uh, if uh, some value uh, some dimensions value from dimensions one for example more than a zero it will be one and uh, less or equals is zero and so on then storing this in data into our inverted list as one code for example more interesting it is product quantization uh, here I'm talking about baseline uh, base idea and without some improvement and so on uh, and uh, yes and uh, it's uh, without additional processing of course and uh, how it works uh, in general uh, here again we are subdividing the original vector into sub components and then clustering each component uh, separately with k-means and we have uh, some uh, we have table code uh, code table uh, for each uh, subcomponent and with uh, for each part of for uh, for each component we try to find nearest centroid and we are storing ids of nearest centroid instead of uh, this uh, part of uh, instead of this part of original vector and storing it into inverted list yes and yes of course tables will be different for each uh, part of for in uh, uh, for each part of original vector so and my next uh, question was about uh, can we use uh, all compression types for all uh, for all audio content types or not and um, and what will be with score with for example accuracy match uh, for this data and uh, my first conclusion was fingerprints for music have greater redundancy than the voice recognition and the first one and the second uh, conclusion was different types of compression might be useful for different types of audio content type and why why I have done this conclusion uh, take a look at this picture uh, i have evaluated uh, performance and of this uh, uh, compression for two different baseline audio types such as speech and uh, it's it was podcast and music and uh, i take i have evaluated two baseline uh, audio type or baseline uh, compressions product quantization into uh, 16 uh, subcomponents for example and uh, a lot of uh, centroids for each components uh, but uh, the size of each vector it was uh, 24 bytes second one it is scalar quantization into uh, power of four level, uh, uh, levels and you see this and our current baseline and for music for example we have the same it's uh, uh, we can see that for music score is the same for for example uh, for different uh, compression but we can see significant degradation performance on uh, on speech so and the next my experiment i will use only scalar uh, scalar quantization of power of two levels 
And uh, next question is about robustness of fingerprints because users can apply some distortion, transformation of audio, but we have to match uh, this audio as well. We still have to match them. And what I mean distortion and uh, transformation, it means, for example, slow down or speed up the tempo of song, transcoding to lower simple rate and so on. And uh, my next question about it. And uh, so, and my main conclusion again was the, uh, the most destructive distortions transcoding to uh, uh, 64 kilobits per second and slow down the tempo of song. The second one is just uh, destructive. Uh, uh, destructive have different influence on different uh, content types and the last one the most difficult audio content type is sounds of nature and uh, what i have done i have some uh, some audio audio set with different audio content type and i add original vectors audio original uh, fingerprints into files and uh, take again this video apply distortion and uh, compute fingerprints and can to search them one by one. And what I have got, uh, I evaluate um, score of matching of score uh, into three different groups. First one, it is a true match. It means we pass some threshold and our audio ID and time ID the correct, was correct. First one, second one, uh, it is uh, a false match. It means we pass threshold, but uh, we our IDs or time label different. It's a mistake. And the last one, it is non-match. It means we uh, didn't pass the threshold. So, and we can see, uh, see here, for example, uh, if we apply distortion on music, uh, increase we can see increasing of uh, non-match errors, but for felt, but for for example, uh, sounds of nature, it is uh, we can see increasing uh, false match, fair uh, false match errors, and uh, and uh, and uh, as for the last one, uh, the last one, my conclusion: why is the sound of nature is very difficult because uh, what. What is the sound of nature? The sound of nature, it is, for example, we have one um, noise of C and another noise of C, and we should match uh, made them, it, it, they, they should be different. Or, for example, one sounds of fire in a, and another sounds of fire, again, we have to separate them. And uh, I suppose for supporting all uh, sounds of nature, uh, it might be reasonable to build some very, very special solution. Yeah, because, and I think for, hu for human, it's difficult as well. And the, the last part of uh, proposed pipeline, it is uh, our unend based filtering. Because in the, after FAIS, as I mentioned, we have good recall, but low precision, and uh, we have to uh, do thanking, thanking with it. And uh, what we have? Again, we have query. Uh, query is some sequence of RAVM. We're considering uh, query as some sequence of RAV embeddings and have some sub subsequence. Subsequence which matched from subsequence from story, from reference audio. And we have to select, uh, we have to check each uh, pair, pairs and uh, say, uh, say match or not. And uh, the one of approach to do, to do it, it is we take our, uh, uh, it we take each uh, subsequence, path into some encoder and get it and compress it into vector and then evaluate, uh, apply some rule for selecting. For example, it might be, I don't know, uh, cosine distance, uh, it's if it is uh, low than some threshold or, or higher than some threshold and match or not. And of course it, 
might be some another solution for example maybe i don't know a logistic regression for it and we can add not only this vector but uh, for, for example it might be uh, size of uh, len of this uh, subsequence and we use uh, we will put it into again uh, some linear model for example and then uh, compare decide match or not and as for encoder uh, i i use it uh, metric load i train it um, uh, train uh, metric uh, learning model for evaluating it. I and tried different uh, uh, di different neural network. It was uh, transformer, no local neural network, and uh, some uh, RNN with uh, I don't know five seven layers. Uh, but my fine tuning data set uh, was not uh, very big, and the best result I have achieved for RNN with guru cells. And um, uh, my uh, and uh, as for uh, training, I it it was it can divide it in two phases. And first for phase, it is pre training. I have I I took arc phase loss, and uh, I have and a lot data and training and pre train my uh, neural network on uh, this uh, data set in the self supervised. And self, uh, and self supervise manner uh, because uh, and because for example I have audio I can apply distortion for example transcoding to low uh, low simple uh, rate and then uh, or maybe make faster slower and so on and uh, training via this loss and the second phase it is fine tuning of uh, this uh, neural network. Uh, I have uh, uh, for this goal. I'm using contrastive loss and uh, and uh, fine tuning on data. It was on from podcasts. I said I have got some set of labeled podcast and fine tuning that this neural network and then apply in this uh, uh, in this matching pipeline. And let's take all uh, parts together. And then my last experiment was about uh, matching music from uh, from podcasts. And my index consists of uh, half billion of vectors. It's about four millions uh, MP3 files and test at the podcasts. Uh, you also can see some my uh, my uh, hardware configuration and performance was about for uh, 14 seconds per podcast and uh, uh, as for score i mean, you can see has its uh, evaluating scores for precision and recall for segments and time and as you can see for time precision it means uh, 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 better for segments and the reason for this is that uh, system works better for uh, long, uh, long uh, subsequence than to short, and uh, as for uh, uh, as for uh, how duration of audio, it uh, the mean duration start for example from uh, several second. Uh, it was about five five seconds for example, and uh, up to I don't know several minutes uh, segments was. So and low pro, and the lowest precision for both for data from um, data which a duration uh, well, low, less than ten seconds, for example. And uh, one uh, I would like to add some notes about implementation. Uh, the main bottleneck bottleneck in this in this was uh, decoding MP3 files because neural network works very very fast uh, and uh, uh, and uh, in order to achieve uh, high uh, high uh, gpu utilization uh, we have to do something with uh, decoding and the, this problem partly 
has been solved uh, via distributed computing. For example, if we take one server and for decoding, another for features extracting, and then connect them uh, uh, via uh, zero MQ, it will end it, it uh, works well and allow to get uh, 80 uh, percent of GPU utilization, for example. And uh, uh, the second one, uh, to be honest, it is out from sc uh, scope of this talk, but uh, uh, it is about um, uh, fingerprints and uh, matching videos. And I have tried to, and uh, we can adapt this pipeline for video as well. And uh, I have tried to put into GPU several parts of uh, all parts of this pipeline, means decoding via uh, DALI library from NVIDIA and of course neural network and files. And uh, at my experience, it's allowed significantly improve scalability of this uh, pipeline and also uh, and uh, also speed up several times if we compare with uh, CPU, uh, uh, CPU, GPU based solution. And conclusion and lessons learned. I have, uh, I have come up with audio content recognition uh, uh, pipeline, which is based on deep learning. And this uh, pipeline, uh, this approach, this pipeline have uh, two uh, additional features. First one, it is uh, uh, audio text, which we get for free, to be honest, because we path our data and have not only some features from intermediate level, but also audio text, so which can be using uh, for further, for example, for our, our recommendation system. And, uh, and also we get audio features, a high level descriptor, which also can use it for recommendation features, or recommendation systems as well. Uh, but uh, if we are building uh, audio recognition system on deep learning uh, from my experiments and from uh, this uh, work, uh, we, have sh we should pay attention to uh, audio content types uh, because it's, uh, the system performance strongly depends on it. And then there again, for this system, the one of the most destructive distortion was transcoding and slow down of tempo. And the last part, it is about implementation node. It is deco decoding and performing, uh, and uh, yes, and uh, GPU based and using GPU based solution. If we, if we can do it, we should try to do it. That's it. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if uh, you have some questions, uh, feel free to text me uh, via, for example, LinkedIn, Facebook, and uh, VK. You can find me via Ruslan Martimo just. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ruslan, for your amazing presentation. Maybe we will share some additional link and you can talk in comments uh, to this video. We have some question in live chat. I'm not sure if it's directly applicable to today's topic, but maybe you can share some ideas. So Roshit asked, it, uh, can we use automatic content recognition to annotate any data set? For example, let's say we are annotating a data set for fake news uh, detection in English. Uh, yes, for example, I have tried using this approach for uh, images. And uh, yes, in, um, in general, I, uh, I built something like this for first again this experimental as well uh, for video images and uh, and sounds. And uh, uh, we can uh, for it works well for images as well uh, because and in general this problem it is sort of uh, uh, copy uh, copy detection. And uh, we can apply some different uh, technique from copy detection uh, because uh, it is not uh, it is not uh, full. Uh, we don't need full metric learning for this goal because uh, in general it is copy detection. And again, uh, we can use it for uh, 
uh, matching uh, fake news, uh, fake news, for example, if we, uh, for example, take split uh, some news from on text, for example, in some parts, and uh, then add into some indexes, and then uh, then try to match them, and we will have some score how uh, I, for, in, with ideas, for example, with fake news, and uh, get some score if we some have some uh, uh, some uh, message, and uh, what, uh, how similar this message to items from our data uh, from our fake. Uh, fake ideas, fake words, uh, data set, if I understand the question correctly. Probably we can. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, maybe we can continue this discussion in the comments later, or you can write directly yeah. to Ruslan if you have any other question. Feel free. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't see any other question in live chat or in the comments, so maybe some people will watch this video later and write some comments in uh, some question and comments. Thank you again, Ruslan, for your Thank you. presentation and for your time. Next presentation will be in two days on Tuesday at 7 p.m. where Ilya Nashmani will talk about separation of mixed audio content. So if you're interested in these topics, you can schedule time for to watch it live or watch it later. Don't forget to like this video if you find it interesting. If you have any question and watch this video, for example, later, use comments to write them. We will check comments and answer this, your question. And share this video with your colleagues and friends who might be interested in today's topics. That's all for today. Have a nice time and see you all in two days. Bye.